welcome back. We are going to go ahead and continue. Right now I'm going to show you how to put the motor together. This is the uh, Tourney G NTM 3548 900kV motor. Um, it's rated really, really well. This one's I think good for up to like 800 watts or something. Um, I'm showing you here a second. It is a, we're going to reverse mount this. So the motor uh, prop adapter is going to be on the back and the shaft is going to go inside the fuselage. We're going to need a uh, Phillips screwdriver and we're going to need a metric um, Allen wrench and we're going to need some blue Loctite to finish this. All right, to get started, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, plate on the back here in just a moment. And I'll just set that down around on the back of it. There we go. By the way, my mag screwdrivers are magnetized. That's why I'm doing this this way. Um, I do have a little bit too much Loctite on there, but hopefully not enough where it's going to get down inside the motor. That would be disastrous, so you want to be careful about how much blue Loctite you use. You definitely don't want that going down in your motor. It's basically liquid plastic. So the first screw I'm just going to kind of put on kind of gently. And kind of loose. The second screw. By the way, when you do these, just put them on just kind of snug. They don't have to be too tight because they're going to be facing the uh, fuselage. The, it's impossible for them to work out, but you would want them working out enough where you would have the vibration coming from the engine and uh, you know them coming loose and then just vibrating your whole fuselage and ruining your video. So that's the reason I'm just putting them on with the Loctite. Just put them on just kind of light snug, probably about 10 to 15 uh, foot pounds, and I don't know exactly what that would be. In kilograms but what would that be three and a half kilograms of torque nothing huge well, most of the time all right last screw I'm gonna turn this over and we are gonna go ahead and put on the uh, prop adapter on the back centers itself if you see the little cup there it should go right on the back of the cup just line up the holes there's only three of them uh, by the way this is a adapter kit uh, the Turnigy or excuse me that Hobby King sells um, I think they're like two, two or three dollars extra I don't know why they don't sell with the motor but if you forgot to get this part um, you might want to order it or find one uh, they make them uh, different sizes by the way 35s and the 28s just different motors different prop adapters if you see right there, put some neodymium magnets on that. Uh, that's a great way to kind of hold your screws in place while you do this. I'm definitely doing it this way because I am uh, trying to show up for video and I don't want to lose that screw. Put too much on there, so if you see me, I'm going to take another screw. I'm going to rub it off on it. Uh, again, you don't want this to go down inside the motor. It's liquid plastic and that would um, mess things up and it would definitely mess up your bearings if you got inside them. So. Same thing here, nothing uh, too overly exciting on the torque. You could probably put 20 pounds of torque on there, uh, 10 to 15, 20 pounds, nothing huge. Let the Loctite do its job. Last thing you want to do is strip out a screw. That's pretty much it. Just repeat that for the last screw and you're done. Next up, I'm going to show you real quick. I did the uh, motor wiring. So, uh, to get the ESC from the back, uh, the, the power from the front of the plane to the back of the plane, you need to make a adapter. Uh, I braided my wires, by the way, in the back just to kind of reduce RF noise. 
I'm using a 60 amp Turnkey plush ESC. I don't plan on pulling six or more than six to 10 amps on this most of the time, but I just want that just to always stay cool. Um, I'm using this for long range FPV. I'm not gonna use it for fun flying or anything. Um, and I made about a 12 inch um, extension there. If you see, it goes from the back to the front. I'm not exactly sure what that is in centimeters. I uh, don't have my rulers near me. I apologize for not looking ahead of time. So I made it so you can take it on and off. Uh, by the way, if you see this, uh, when I originally put this in, I put this in to test it this way, and I did go back later on and put shrink tubing over these. Once I made sure the motor was spinning in the right direction, I actually shrunk, uh, put shrink tubing over all those connectors so that they would never come apart, especially in flight. Not that they would, but you never know. I might as well make this thing for long range and uh, for durability, so I made sure that was taken care of ahead of time. And this is a fairly large opening, so you should be able to sit that in real easy. So take it in. You'll see me in a moment. Um, I'm grabbing, I'm gonna put two screws in. I decided not to let you see me do the whole video on that because uh, the screws were kind of hard to get in. I had messed up on the holes. The They make them for their plane. I should have checked that ahead of time and then maybe just turned that motor mount before I put it together, but I didn't, so. Um, it is what it is. So put those on the way that is. Wiring, I'm just gonna show you. So now what this is, um, looking at this. That'll come in here in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I'm gonna put the, um, receiver in. Uh, for maidening, uh, I don't want to put anything expensive in this. I'm using an old Spectrum receiver that I had from like on my second plane or something like that. It does really well for maidening, so if I ruin it, I'm not going to cry. Uh, I'm going to put that kind of center on the plate. Um, final position, by this way, was the uh, first slot down. Um, I would recommend either doing the top slot or the first slot down uh, for ease of access reaching down into it to get your wires or to re-put your wires in or out excuse me take them in or out i'm putting using some of that industrial velcro that you saw me use in the other parts of the video i'm gonna put that in the middle of the plate and a piece of it on the actual receiver so it'll be held down nicely and that uh the extension part of that i'm going to put off to the side of the fuselage by the way in the opposite orientation so the other wires will be sitting there vertical right near the entrance of right where you put that board um, that way you just have a little bit longer of a um, dish to distance for diversity for reception of the antenna there you go pretty simple and there it is right there Servo wiring. This is where I was uh, talking about. I'm gonna uh, put a ferrite ring on here, so I'm at, just so I don't have any servo chatter or anything. I'm putting um, the ferrite rings on. So real quick, first step: just take your Exacto blade and just prep the little tabs and pull the wires out. Do this gently so you don't break the tabs. All right. Once they're all done. Pull them out. And then wrap your ferrite, put it down near the bottom and wrap the wire around your ferrite ring. Trying to keep those leads as uh, clean as possible so they're not wrapped up too much. And then when you're done, a um, good way to secure it is to put uh, hot glue on the ferrite ring. Put your wires back in in the correct position. If you have any doubts, grab another servo wire, look at it, and make sure they're correctly put back in. And there you go, that's it. 
I'll show you later on how I buried that in the wing. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.